Hi, this is just a <coughs> simple demo to um, show the use of Kyle's Microvision IDE uh, for ARM. So uh, we're going to look at creating a project, adding a, a, a source assembly file to it, um, typing in some uh, ARM assembly, uh, building the program, making the object file, and then running it through the debugger. So let's get started. First thing we got to do is find Microvision. Go to the Start menu. There are programs. Uh, it doesn't appear that there's a folder for it, but at the programs at the top, there it is. So just start that up. Okay, so we're going to start with creating a project. So choose project, new microvision project. I recommend that the first thing you do, probably even before you start um, microvision, is to create a folder that you'll that you'll put all of your projects into. Now you can see right now there's the folder for me, and and this is another project. So I'm going to back out. So now I'm in my uh, projects folder and uh, I'm going to call this project uh, example um, so that it doesn't get mixed up with other projects. Create a new folder. Go into that folder and then give a file name for the project configuration file. This is the file. Um, if you're opening an existing project, this is the file you want to look for to open. Go ahead and save that. Next we have to uh, choose the target device. So I want an ARM chip. I'm going to open that up and uh, we'll use the ARM7 Big Indian this semester. Okay, so we're started. Now I want to add some uh, ARM assembly. So under the file menu, I'll do a new. And then uh, let me just go ahead and save this right away and add it to the project. So I'll do a save. And I'm going to call this example as well. And it's source assembly. So this is kind of important so that uh, the contents of the file get interpreted correctly. Do not forget to add the dot s. Okay. So now we have the file. And you might think that it's already part of the project. But unfortunately, that is not the case. So we go back into the project menu, go to manage, go to components, environments, books. Then under this file col column, go to add files. Um, you know, items match my search because the search filter is C source files. Let's change that to assembly source files and there's the program okay so that's added click OK if we open this up there this is what you want to see you want to see that it is added okay now I'm ready to start adding directives and code um, first, I have to declare uh, a segment for the code. Now, I'm going to hit tab. Um, these first couple of lines. Well, actually, the only thing for now that should be in column one are labels. Um, so this is another important thing to pay attention to. So anything that's not a label should not 
be in column one. Okay, so you've seen in the textbook that uh, these directives are typically typed in uppercase. Um, I don't particularly care for uppercase, so I'm going to break with the convention and type in lowercase. So the assembler doesn't particularly care. Okay, so there's the area declaration. Now the directive to indicate that this is the starting point in this segment. Now some code. Alright, so that this line will move, actually just copy the value 4 into register R0. Guess what that line does. Okay, so now I, uh, we're going to put in a branch instruction um, to create an infinite loop at this point so that the program just stops here. Um, so I need a label for that. So I have to get back to column one. There I am. There's the label. There's the branch instruction, and there's the branch target. So that branch instruction would simply branch to itself, giving me uh, an infinite loop that doesn't do anything. Okay, and now indicate the segment end. Okay, so to recap, only labels in column one, anything, any line that doesn't start with a label, uh, Initial character had better not be in column one. Okay, let's save that. Now let's build it. Let's just, yeah, there's the build. Okay, we look down here, we see uh, a couple of error messages. This first one is telling me there's a problem with line one. These at attribute here refers to the attributes of the segment. And I now see that I missed a comment, comma that uses a separator between the attributes. Okay, so let's save, build. Okay. Now, I have problems with line six. Tell me it doesn't like E0. E0 should really be R0, All right, because what I want is to add the contents of registers R1 and R0 and put the result in register R2. So let's go ahead and save, build. Okay, so that uh, successfully assembled. Now what I would like to do is run it. So I'm going to enter the, uh, the debugger. So click on that button there. Um, this is the free version. Of course, they're going to limit its performance, but I will, we're not going to be writing programs that large. Okay, I'm going to resize this panel here so I can see register values. There are all the register values. Uh, everything's initialized to zero pretty much. This reset button will reset the uh, simulated ARM processor. Never hurts to to do that. Here we can see our source assembly. So these lines indicate that the program counter is sitting just before this. This instruction has not executed yet. Here's the actual. This is the assembled code with uh, it also disassembled. So. This is the value 
stored in memory location 0. So we can see that the program counter is set to 0 right now. So the, the processor is poised to execute this move instruction. Um, let's go ahead and run this. There's the run. Okay, so it's it's running as fast as it can right now. We're not going to see anything because it is running. I can stop it here. Right, and it's at this branch statement. You know, we can see the effects of the execution of the instructions. R0 has the value 4. There it is. R1 has the value 5. And R2 has the sum of 4 and 5. The program counter is at address C, which is the, the branch instruction. Let's reset the processor. And now I'm going to single step it so, you can, so we can see uh, the results of the instruction executions one at a time. So this is the step one line button. So if I click this, the line being pointed to will be executed. Okay, so that line was executed. The program counter increments to 4, and register R0 has the value 4 in it. Do that again, and the next instruction is executed. Register R1 has the value 5 in it. One more time. Now R2 has the sum of 4 and 5. And note that the program counter is also incrementing. Now from here, we can click this, as, since this is a branch, back, back to the same instruction. I can execute that as many times as I want, and it's, the instruction pointer will never move from there. So let's fix that. I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to modify this branch so that it jumps back up to, the, to this first move. So I'm going to leave uh, debug mode. put a label there on that first line and then change the target of the branch instruction to there. Save, build, run the debugger. All right, and start single stepping. So from here, it should Branch back up to uh, line four here, the first move. Yay! Okay, now I can do, let's get past this first instruction. If I double click, I believe if I double click on this, I can, yep, I can change that value. So let's make that 0xc. And now execute that move. And now do the addition. So C plus 5 in hex gives us 11. So in decimal, let's, let's see, that's 12. That's 5. 12 plus 5 is 17. And 1, 1 in hex is 17. So that that worked out. So there's a maybe not so quick demonstration of creating project. Oh, one last thing. Let's go back to edit mode. Close the project. I just want to demonstrate how to open a project. Project. Open project. Enter your project folder. Here it's example and it'll filter on uh, microvision projects double click boom we're ready to start editing or or running so that's it